Hey, what is up, disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, I'm going to give you guys a quick review of the Simon Lazat time lapse. I was able to get my hands on a prototype due to my boy Grant Latin. I will link his YouTube channel in the description below. He posts a lot of really fun shorts and videos on his channel, so definitely go check him out. Um, without Grant, I wouldn't be able to review this disc for you guys today. I've also got a small stack of other distance drivers that I find to be quite similar. Prodigy D1, uh, 400S plastic. Birdie Disc Golf Supply Reach, very similar to the time lapse, in my opinion, flight and feel. Um, we've obviously got an Innova Destroyer, the main comparison for the time lapse that most people are concerned with. And then we also have a Pro Discus Razeri, which is actually quite similar to a Destroyer. The flight numbers are 12404, but they couldn't be further from the truth. It flies a lot more like a 125 minus 13 or somewhere in that range. So we'll throw a few dis distance drivers and then we'll throw the time lapse and yeah, see how they compare. We'll just start from the bottom up. We'll go Razeri, Destroyer Reach, D1, and then the time lapse. If you have never thrown a Razeri, definitely not a bad distance driver, worth checking one out. You can see, definitely not like a zero four. It wanted to kind of pick up and glide a little bit for sure. Flies very similar to this 400 SD1. Just picking up a little bit and then having a nice good fade at the end. Love the way that D1 flies. Now we have two of the more stable discs in this slot or category. Um, this blue reach is very beefy. Like I can yank over on that thing as hard as I can. Grip lock on Annie, and it's always gonna fight out. This destroyer has a very similar profile to that time lapse. I'll show you guys um, later on in the video, but in of a destroyer. But very stable. And then Obviously, why you guys are here, Simon Line. <sighs> that, that thing does not want to go anywhere uh, for me, especially on backhand. Like, no matter how, how I throw it, that thing just wants to get on its side and get down quick. So this is the comparison that everyone wants to see. This is one of my flatter destroyers. As you can see, they are very, very similar, basically across the board. Um, they both carry a very similar amount of dome, very similar shape under the wing. It's basically a destroyer with a little bit more aggressive concave um, angle under the wing here. So that's why it's been, for most people, a bit more overstable than your typical destroyer. <clears throat> Nice and stable, prototype reach. I know I can trust this one. <clears throat> I tried to grab more of my overstable 12 speeds so you guys can really see how stable the time-lapse actually is. Um, this Disc Golf Vermont Destroyer also pretty stable. Basically all flying the exact same. Now we have the time lapse here, also very stable. Oh, don't stay in the tree. One thing that's definitely noticeable, no matter how I throw the time lapse, compared to even those other distance drivers, in a lot of cases are still way too overstable for me. So the shot that I've been enjoying using the time lapse for the most is the just super aggressive Annie flex forehand line. So it's kind of one of those lines where you're intentionally really pulling over on top of the disc, letting that extreme over stability kick in and letting this sort of glide out of the flight. Flying exactly how you would want just an overstable destroyer to fly. I really like kind of just forcing the issue and throwing it on Anheuser.
you can see just how crazy overstable it is. You can see even putting it on almost 45 degrees of Anheuser that this just wants to fight out. It's just, just like everyone said before me, just super beefy. So we got the time lapse just here, and then we have the Disc Golf Vermont Destroyer. I'd say about 45 to 50 feet farther-ish. One other notable thing is that specific destroyer doesn't carry any dome to it, so it actually flies quite a bit less far than most other destroyers I've thrown. So even my like worst distance destroyer flies farther than the Lazat time lapse. All right, let's give the destroyer, the Reach, the time lapse, and the 400 SD1 uh, one last forehand throw. Again, I'm going to focus on forcing the issue and forcing Anheuser to really just show how truly overstable the time lapse is. We'll start off with the D1, really chopping down on it. Four hundred SD one having just enough stability to kind of fight out right at the end. Birdie disc golf supply reach. Having way more stability than the D one. Also not domey at all, and that just doesn't go very far. And then yellow Vermont destroyer. Again, not domey at all. One of probably the least domey destroyers I've ever seen. having a little bit of glide and then just fading out pretty early in the flight. And then we have the beefcake, the Lizotte. Let's really, I'm gonna really force the issue on this thing. That had quite a bit of Anheuser on it. Um, coming, coming up similar distance there, um, but ultimately, you can see how much Anheuser I'm putting on this thing, and it's got no minus one turn to speak of. And I definitely think at least this prototype run came out significantly more overstable than what they were originally advertised to be. All right, we got a 400 S D1 here. The D1 kind of turned and then faded late in the flight. Um, the 400 S is on the way more overstable side for D1s in general. And yeah, this guy's pretty stable. You can see it wanted to fight out, but it didn't fully fight out. We got the birdie supply reach, super overstable, doesn't go very far. Then we have the Rosari, then we have the flat destroyer, and then all the way back there, we've got the Lazat time lapse. I believe as the mold currently stands, I think the time lapse can easily be replaced by a more replaceable option, like an Innova Excalibur or a Discraft Force or just anything really overstable could replace the time lapse for most people. Uh, this disc, again, it's reliably overstable, and it could have a place in my bag as like forehand rollers, forehand flex shots, backhand super aggressive flexes, or just if you want to throw up and over something and get like a really extreme spike hyzer, then I think the time lapse is useful for all those shots, but I just don't fully think it's worth throwing such a valuable collector's disc in such an overstable slot where you can pretty much throw any company's overstable disc in that slot. Um, if you're a Super Simon fan, and you like repping the Simon line, I think you might as well just wait for the stock time lapses to come out. Put these guys up on the shelf and just kind of cherish them as a collector, sell them. But I don't know, in my opinion, you're probably better off just throwing a super, another super overstable disc that's a lot more replaceable than these. Again, big shout out to my boy Grant Latin for hooking me up with this time lapse. It was really fun throwing it, and I'll probably spend a lot more time throwing it to see if it gets beat in. So let me know if you guys want to see the wear and tear stages over time. I would definitely like to update you guys on that. Uh, if you want to see it compared to the MVP limit, the panic, I think those discs actually are quite similar to the time lapse. Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, we definitely want to, if we can, bang out a few more videos about the time lapse. So any questions you guys have, let me know in the comments below. You guys are watching Iceberg TV. Take care.